Howdy team and happy Thursday, and I am coming to you from the closest thing that we have in this church uh, to a cave. I'm down below the building under one of the stairwells outside. Um, and it is, it's a little cave. It's where we keep our stuff that, you know, doesn't have to be sanitary, but don't necessarily want the building. So I'm happy to show it to you Sunday morning if you'd like. Some of you may want to bring your class down here. It's pretty perfect. Um, for starters, I want to say thank you. Um, the gift y'all gave me last night at the Christmas party was <laughs> unbelievable, and I'm, I'm so honored and excited to, to have that in my office. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, so thank you for doing that. The party last night was so much fun. Uh, those of y'all that got to come, thank you for coming. Uh, if you didn't get to come, I have your stocking for you. You can get that Sunday morning, and it is full of goodies. Uh, that students brought you, and I'm, I'm thrilled that they, they honor you all in that way. But, uh, but let's talk about this week's lesson. I like um, option one. It's just okay, but here's really, here's how I would love for all of you to start your lesson. Forget option one, forget option number two. And this is where uh, you mamas will come really in handy, but even you guys uh, should be able to, to, to set this up for our kids. I want you to have the students to just process verbally, talk this out, Talk about what it would be like to be born in a room like this, as opposed to the hospital room that most of them, if not all of them, were born in. Um, I've had a handful of students over here that were born at home. I had a student one time that was born in the back of his, uh, his mother's truck. That was a pretty funny story. Um, but by and large, generally we are born in very secure, very sanitary circumstances. And Jesus wasn't even a little bit. And I really would, like, talk this out with them. Help them understand. Think, think that, but there was no doctor there. There was no nurse there. Um, there was no baby shower for Mary. Um, the strips of cloth literally, almost certainly would have been um, just Joseph's robe torn off, and they used that to wrap Jesus up. They didn't have warm blankets. There was no special hat or booties uh, for Jesus to be put on. Um, there was no mom or mother-in-law there to just encourage Mary through the process. It wasn't sanitary. It, it wouldn't have been cold, because it was probably in the spring when this happened, um, but it wouldn't have been warm either. There almost certainly would have been animals around. This is not the ideal situation to be born. And the biggest factor was, to me, is just the fact that they were alone. I don't know if Joseph knew what to do to have a baby. They were alone. At least they were. And I bring that up just to simply say kind of the point, not even kind of the point, the point of Christmas is the fact that we, we, we're not alone anymore. God is with us. And so literally, even though they were in this awful circumstance, God was with them. In fact, God was the one who set this entire thing up. So the other fascinating thing about the Christmas story to me is, is how um, literally government can do good work, even if they do it accidentally. A census had never been taken in the Roman Empire at this point yet. And all of a sudden, uh, Quirinius says, you know what, we need to take a census. Never been done before. Well, that set up Joseph, who lived in Nazareth, with Mary, who lived in Nazareth, who were from Bethlehem in the line of David. Even though they lived in Nazareth, they had to travel down to Bethlehem to go do this census thing. And that just so happened to be the time when Jesus was supposed to be born. And that's significant because there were prophecies about Jesus' life that said he was going to be from Nazareth, but he was going to be born in Bethlehem. And by the way, there were prophecies too that said that he was going to have to go to Egypt and escape, uh, escape to Egypt and then come back. And all of those prophecies were fulfilled because of this census that had to be taken. So the government can do good work. That's actually, um, this week in particular, that's pretty important for us to remember. And what's also interesting to me is the Magi, when they show up two years later, and, and, and if you've never heard that before, that's probably right. They didn't show up the night that Jesus was born. This was down the road. That's why um, Herod wanted babies that were two years old and younger to die, because he knew how long they had been searching. But the whole reason the Magi showed up I love this. They learned those prophecies about the Messiah, the Jewish Messiah, from Daniel when Daniel lived in Persia. In fact, he's the one who probably set up the Magi program the way that it is. And they learned those prophecies from, from Daniel. And the whole reason that Daniel was in Persia in the first place, what was Babylon, is because of the sins of the people. 
And so God sent them away because of their sins. And even in the middle of all that sin, God was working out because it was the Magi's who showed up and the gifts that they brought. Um, They're the, the, the gifts that allowed Joseph and Mary to escape in the first place because they would have been able to sell those and use those to fund their trip to Egypt and they would have been just fine. Here's what we want the students to see. God is constantly working out his plan, even in the middle of lousy, horrible circumstances. He's always in control, and he's always working, and he will win in the end because he's with us. Guys, I love y'all. Merry Christmas. Can't wait to hang out with you on Sunday morning. See you later.